Hi everyone! This time, I am going to discuss the first type of CPU scheduling algorithm, which is known as the first come first serve scheduling algorithm, otherwise known as the FCFS. When we say first come first serve scheduling algorithm, the idea here is the process which requests the CPU first gets the CPU allocation first, meaning the lesser the arrival time of the process, the sooner will the process get the CPU. First come first serve scheduling algorithm is characterized as non-preemptive. And when we say non-preemptive, it means that if the CPU is allocated to a process, that process will hold the CPU until its execution time. This time, we are going to compute for the average turnaround time and average waiting time using the first come for serve scheduling algorithm. But before we can compute the average turnaround time, we need first to get the turnaround time of each of our given process. And before we can compute the average waiting time, we need first to get the waiting time of each of our given process. Now, in order for us to get the turnaround time, we need first to determine the completion time of each of our given process. Okay, so when we say turnaround time, it refers to the total time spent by a process to get into the memory, waiting in the ready queue and executing in the CPU. Waiting time is the amount of time that a specific process needs to wait in the ready queue waiting for the CPU. And completion time is the time at which process completes its execution. So say for example, we are given here five process, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. And then we also have here their corresponding Arrival time. Arrival time is the time at which the process arrives in the ready queue. So the arrival time of P1 is 4, P2 is 0, P3 is 3, P4 is 6, and the arrival time of P5 is 7. And then we also have here the burst time or execution time. So burst time is the time required by the process to complete execution. The given burst time of P1 is 5, P2 is 2, P3 is 2 also, P4 is 7, and P5 has a burst time of 6. Now, I am going to create a Gantt chart for me to be able to show to you when a particular process gets the CPU time for its execution and when it completes its execution. So this Gantt chart will also help us to determine easily the completion time of each of our given process. And consequently, we will be able to compute for the turnaround time and waiting time. So this is our Gantt chart. We are going to start from time 0. At this unit of time, which is 0, we are going to check if there is a process that arrives in the ready queue. So we refer to our table and look for the process which is in the ready queue at time 0. So we have here one process which is in the ready queue at time 0 and this is P2. Okay, since it is only P2 which arrive at time 0 in the ready queue, we are going to allocate the CPU to P2. So in the Gantt chart, we now have here P2. And it will execute for how long? Okay, we check for the worst time of P2 in our table. The worst time of P2 is 2. So this means that 
P2 will execute up to 2 units of time. Okay, so in the Gantt chart, we are going to add 2 to 0. So this now becomes 2. And then at this unit of time now, which is 2, we are going to check which process arrive in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table and look for the process which is in the ready queue at time 2. Okay, so there is no process which arrive at time 2. So meaning there is no process in the ready queue at time 2. Okay, so we proceed now to our next arrival time because there is no process which arrive at time 2. And the next arrival time is 3. Okay, this is the arrival time of P3. So in the Gantt chart, we now have here 3. So as you can see, this portion is shaded. Okay, this is shaded because it means that the CPU is idle at this point in time since there is no process in the ready queue at time 2. Okay, so at this unit of time, okay, until this, the CPU is idle. Okay, and then at this unit of time now, which is 3, we check which process arrive in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table and look for the process which is in the ready queue at time 3. So we have here P3. It is only P3 which is in the ready queue at time 3 because P1 arrived at time 4, P4 arrived at time 6, and P5 arrives at time 7. So since it is only P3 which is in the ready queue, Okay, P2 is already done with its execution. We are going to allocate the CPU to P3. So in the Gantt chart, we now have here P3. And it will execute for how long? We check for the worst time of P3 in the table. So the worst time of P3 is 2. So this means that P3 will execute up to 2 units of time. So we add now the execution time or the worst time of P3 which is 2 to 3. So this now becomes 5. Now at this unit of time now which is 5, we check which process arrive in the ready queue. So we refer again to our table. At time 5, which process arrive in the ready queue? So we have here P1 because its arrival time is 4. So meaning to say, at this point, somehow at this point, P4 arrive in the ready queue while P3 is still executing. Okay, so at 5 unit of time, it is only P1 which is in the ready queue. Okay, so P2 is already done with its execution. P3 is also already done with its execution. P4 arrive at time 6. P5 arrive at time 7. So at time 5, it is only P1 which is in the ready queue having an arrival time of 4. So we are going now to allocate the CPU to P1. So in the Gantt chart, we now have here P1. And it will execute for how long? So we check for the worst time of P1. Okay, so we have here 5. So meaning P1 will execute up to 5 units of time. So in the Gantt chart, we are going to add 5 here. So this now becomes 10. And then at this unit of time now, which is 10, we are going to check which process arrive in the ready queue. Okay, so we refer to our table. Okay, so we have two process, P4 and P5, which are in the ready queue at time 10. Okay, so P4 arrive at time 6, P5 arrive at time 7. So both of them are already in the ready queue at time 10. Okay, since this is first come for serve, the scheduling algorithm, okay, and P4 has lesser 
arrival time than that of P5, we are going to allocate first the CPU to P4. So in the gun chart, we now have here P4. And it will execute for how long? So we check for the worst time of P4. This is 7. So P4 will execute up to 7 units of time. So in the gun chart, we add 7 to 10. Okay, so this now becomes 17. And finally, okay, at this unit of time, we only have one process which is in the ready queue. Okay, because P2 is already done with its execution, P2 is also already done with its execution, same with P1 and P4. So it is only P5 which is in the ready queue at this unit of time. So we are going now to allocate the CPU to P5. So in the gun chart, we now have here P5. And the worst time of P5 is 6. So we are going to add 6 to 17 here. So we now have here 23. Okay. So we are done with our Gantt chart. Okay. Because we are done with our Gantt chart, we can now determine the completion time via our Gantt chart of each of our given process. Again, the completion time is the time at which process completes execution. So we start from P1. This is P1 in the Gantt chart. The completion time of P1 is this one, 10. Then we have here P2. The completion time of P2 is this one, 2. Then we have here P3. The completion time is this one, 5. And P4 is here, so the completion time is this one, 17. And P5 has a completion time of 23. Okay, because we already know the completion time of each of our given process, we can now compute for the turnaround time. The turnaround time is computed using this formula. Completion time minus arrival time. So we start from computing the turnaround time of P1. Okay, so using the formula completion time minus arrival time. So the turnaround time of P1 now is, so this is the completion time minus the arrival time. So the the turnaround time is now equivalent to 6. The turnaround time of P2 is this one. Okay. So 2 minus okay, the arrival time which is 0. So the turnaround time is 2. The turnaround time of P3 is okay, this one. 5 minus okay, the arrival time which is 3. So the turnaround time is 2. And then the turnaround time of P4 is okay, 17 minus 6 is equivalent now to 11. And the turnaround time of P5 is this one, 23 minus 7. It is equivalent to 16. Okay. So we now compute for the waiting time of each of our given process and the formula for computing the waiting time is turnaround time minus the worst time. So the waiting time of P1 is, okay, so we have here the turnaround time, which is 6 minus the worst time, which is 5. So the waiting time is 1. The waiting time of P2 is, so we now have here the turnaround time, which is 2 minus the CPU time or the execution time or worst time, which is 2. So the waiting time is 0. And then the waiting time of P3 is, okay, so we have here 2 minus the worst time, which is 2. So the waiting time is 0 also. And then the waiting time of P4 is this one, turnaround time minus, okay, the worst time, okay, which is this one. So we now have here 4. And then the waiting time of P5 is, 
Okay, so we now have here 16 minus 6. It is equivalent now to 10. Okay, since we already have our turnaround time and waiting time for each of our given process, we can now compute for the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So this is our table. Okay, the average turnaround time is computed. Okay. Via adding the turnaround time of each of our given process. And then since this is computation of average turnaround time, we are going to divide the sum okay, to the number of process, which is 5. So average turnaround time now is equivalent to the turnaround time of P1, which is 6, plus the turnaround time of P2, which is 2, plus the turnaround time of P3, which is 2 also, plus the turnaround time of P4, which is 11, plus the turnaround time of P5, which is 16. So the sum is 37. So we divide it by 5 because we have 5 process. So the computed average turnaround time is 7.4. And then the average waiting time is equivalent to the waiting time of P1, which is 1, plus the waiting time of P2, which is 0, plus the waiting time of P3, which is 0, plus the waiting time of P4, which is 4, plus the waiting time of P5, which is 10. Again, we add this 5 waiting time and divide it by five because we have five process since we are getting the average waiting time okay so we now have here okay this one 15 divided by five the computed average waiting time is three so these are our computed average turnaround time and average waiting time using the first type of cpu scheduling algorithm which is first come first serve